this video, I'm going to introduce and provide a hands-on with the most compact but also the best when it comes to image quality view camera or technical camera in the world. I did shoot a lot with Phase 1 in the past, in particular on the XF body but also on the Alpha Swiss body for shift functionality. A few days ago I got the new XT body which I can combine with my digital back. It's a perfect compact view camera with shift functionality in X and Y direction by minus 10 millimeters to plus 10 millimeters. And I'm going to show the handling now, I'm also showing samples. Let's get started with our tour. So it all starts with a power button. Switching on the camera starts a little animation and the progress bar at the bottom of the screen. It also says clearly that this is an IQ digital back, in my case the IQ4, with 150 megapixels and the branding also is clear. This is all coming from phase one and the camera is ready to go now. The next thing I want to show is how to toggle through the light triangle. So we have on the left hand side the lower button for ISO, aperture and shutter speed. On the right hand side we can adjust the values as I'm just demonstrating here. We can uh, change the parameters in the way we want to compose light and get exposure in the shot and then we can actually also go into drive mode here. We have single, continuous and timer and I'm using timer here on a tripod. After adjusting all the parameters in the light triangle for exposure composition, just pushing the release button here on the touch screen of the IQ4 is enough to take the shot. I'm fully on electronic shutter here by the way. The next step is to check the image taken by the IQ4. There is nothing worse than thinking you have taken a good shot and then finding out later in post-processing that the shot is actually very very bad. So I'm checking here in particular on sharpness. I'm zooming in with a double tap to 100% and now I use pinch to zoom to actually see if everything I wanted to be in focus really is in focus and if the image is meeting my standards. Besides the fact that you can shift in X and Y direction, you can also rotate the view camera if it is mounted on a tripod. You pull a release trigger and then you can rotate it by 90 degrees in the way I'm just demonstrating here for let's say portrait orientation shots. Next I'm going to quickly show how to do a shift in X direction, which is horizontal direction. And there is a nice mechanical wheel you can use for that and I'm just showing this here in the video. And you can rotate in both directions, as I mentioned before, by minus 10 millimeters to plus 10 millimeters. And this is in particular very useful for panorama stitching shots. In general, the build quality of the view camera is excellent. Let's quickly look how to do this in Y direction, so vertical direction. There is another wheel here you can use. There are also little orientation points where it snaps in when you rotate those wheels, which gives you a better handling. And uh, by the way, if you shift a lot to the extreme end, you get some vignetting which you can correct by LCC profiles. In contrast to the IQ3, you don't need LCC profiles necessarily. But in order to avoid vignetting, what you can also do is, when you see the vignetting appearing, which is now on the screen in the upper left hand side corner, you can shift back a little bit to correct for that. As I just mentioned, the overall build quality is just excellent. Next thing before I come to samples is, I want to show the ND filter simulation via multi-framing on the IQ4. I have a longer tutorial on that on my channel, but basically you adjust first of all the image in the way you want to have it by adjusting the shutter speed, the ISO and the aperture. If you're happy with the result, in this case I'm not happy with the result, so I go for a faster shutter speed because the image was overexposed. And basically when you have the light composition you want to have, you can actually go back and uh, adjust the multi-framing feature which is built in into the IQ4. Here I'm still not satisfied, so I'm still playing around with the shutter speed. One fifth of a second is what I want. And as I explained before, there's nothing worse than a shot where you think it's good and actually it's not good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm checking the image. If I like it, if the sharpness and the overall light composition is to my liking, matching my taste, I can switch and go over to the multi-framing feature 
which is built into the IQ4. So here we are pinch to zoom. I control the sharpness of the image. I'm happy with that clock tower. And so I can go back into shooting mode. Swiping from right to left reveals a menu and pushing that little Sigma icon gives me the multi-framing feature. Multi-framing means you specify the total time of exposure. So I'm pushing that now and then you get this menu where you can actually choose what the total time of the image in terms of exposure time should actually be. So you can go up to several minutes here. You can also adjust all the other things again. So here I decided for one fifth of a second, if you remember before, and I now switch from 50 seconds to let's say here one minute of exposure time. Now what multi-framing is doing, it takes a lot of shots and composes them or stacks them on top of each other. In this case, the overall exposure time will be one minute and we will have 137 frames stacked on top of each other. So checking the result now and comparing the single shot image and the multi-framed image, you clearly see the difference in the water here in the single shot. The water is not calm, is showing these movements water has if you have not a long exposure time. On the multi-framing image, the water is very calm, peaceful and the whole image has a completely different atmosphere. What also impressed me in particular yesterday in my shooting was the natural color reproduction of the IQ4. And you see here clearly how on the sensor you see exactly reflected what's in reality around me in this shooting scene here. Zooming into the picture, you can even see, despite the hazy air and atmosphere, the Swiss mountains at the far horizon with exactly that same light I saw with my naked eyes. And given that the 32mm Rodenstock lens I used here is a full frame equivalent of 22mm, the details we get are just amazing. I will conclude the video now with a few sample shots from my shooting yesterday and I hope you will enjoy those pictures. They are suitable for large prints because you have 150 megapixel resolution and you can take this to the extreme by taking several shots via shifts in the X and Y direction and stitching them together to a gigapixel panorama. So there are basically no limits in what you can achieve when it comes to resolution, image quality and image size. Mm -hmm.